It's time, my dudes. <sighs> the time everyone's been waiting for, including myself, the assembly. That's one week until my birthday. We need to get the rod bearing clearances checked. We need to get the piston wall clearances checked. And we also have to rebuild the transmission yet. So we have no time to waste. So let's get cracking. So first things first, we're gonna measure the piston diameter. And I've labeled each piston with A, B, C, and D. Once we get that, then we're gonna measure the bearing diameter. And whichever both dimensions fit closer to whichever cylinder, that's where we will match them to. Because I want the same even tolerances between each piston and rod. So I'm gonna try and fit them to make the most even clearance, basically. We're gonna grab our dial calipers. We're gonna get to measuring. So basically what you're going to do is measure from piston skirt to piston skirt. It's really difficult to do right now so I'm just going to do these all off camera and we'll catch up back with the measurements. So measuring our pistons, they all measured out to 80.95 millimeters. So we're going to put our bearings in, torque these down and then measure our rod bearing diameter. Well, we got pretty late last night so I uh, cut the video and went to sleep because I would work. So, uh, new day, same old grind, let's get back to it. So to torque these, there are two steps. First step is 14 foot-pounds. Second step is 30 foot-pounds for the B16. 13 millimeter socket. Let's see if I can torque them while it's in my hand. Probably not, but. Nope. Shit, how am I gonna do this? So I'm holding this between my legs to try and torque it. It worked, but it's fucking difficult. All right, there's the first torque spec of 14. Second step of 30. I'm probably not gonna be able to do this, but let's see. Doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to do this. Well, I had to position it between two pieces of wood with some cloth on the end so I don't damage it uh, and stand on the wood just to get these torqued. Uh, when it's in the engine, I won't have that issue, but <laughs> just to get this measurement, it was kind of a little bit difficult, but I'm gonna knock these out and then we'll get back with the measurement. <clears throat> got them all torqued, and now that they're torqued, we can go ahead and measure our diameter to see what our clearance would be. got 44.96 on to the next one so they're all mic'd out uh, all the raw bearing diameters came to the same measurement 44.96 so honestly right now I don't even have to measure the raw journal because it doesn't matter they're all the same um, if one is too tight the, I'm not gonna be able to switch them they're all the same diameter on the piston too so it doesn't matter what bore they go in they're all gonna be, they're all gonna have the same tolerance if I move this one in each cylinder, it doesn't matter. But I am still going to mic out the rod journals just to um, find the clearances. So uh, I'm gonna do that right now and then uh, we'll catch back up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and check rod one journal and see what it specs out to be. This bearing clearance or this bearing, this rod journal is coming out at 44.97 So I kind of just got pissed cuz Clearances weren't I guess they weren't adding up so I had to really 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 take my time to measure them um, Basically the rod journals they all came out to 44.95 millimeters um, and um, The bearing the rod journal was 44.98 which is pretty awesome they all came out to be the same so that gives us 0 0.03 millimeters or 0 0.0012 inches. 12 ten thousandths of an inch, which is falls right in spec. So we're good and um, it's time to assemble this thing. I was dumbfounded because of what I wrote here, but it's actually backwards. The uh, rod bearing diameter is 44.98 and the journal itself is 44.95 which gives us our correct clearance i don't know why i was mixing it up i guess uh, i guess trying to hurry and get through it i kind of flipped them but 
we do have the correct clearance and it should be all good. Now it's time to assemble. So before we start to assemble this, um, we have to hone the cylinders. And so I'm gonna take these main caps off so just so we don't get any debris or anything in the bearings. have the mains out and the bearings out. I'm going to give you guys a quick little peek of the cylinder walls before and we'll look at them after. Kind of glazed. I just sprayed them down with brake clean to get some of the shit off them but I'm going to lube them up with some oil, 10W30, and uh, we'll get the hone going here. So most people use the ball tree style hone that has a, like a bunch of balls on it. I uh, This is my first time using the stone style one. Um, I soaked it in oil so that way uh, it stays a little bit more moist than it would normally. Um, but what you want to do is just put it down inside the cylinder, let it expand, and you basically want to keep the speed constant and have the... Uh, have it go up and down the cylinder in a smooth fashion so that you can create that 45 degree angle cross hatch. Give it a little wipe. It should be okay. Our cross hatch does look like it has a 45 degree angle, so our ring should seat fine and we should be Gucci. Move on to the next one. Now, I could have had this done at a shop, but I chose to do it myself because I like to do things myself. Uh, it does look like, I guess you could say it looks scratched, but that's actually the cross hatch. Just because the cylinders were kind of glazed before, it looks so uh, aggressive, I guess. Uh, I did go a little heavier on that one because I was getting the speed down and the angle and it's up and down. But uh, this should help seal just fine and uh, shouldn't have any problems. Now that we have the cylinders honed, I'm gonna wipe out all of the bearing journals. Make sure there's no debris. Get behind there, maybe get into the bearing. Um, any debris behind the bearing will cause an improper fitment, which could cause the bearing to be too tight. Um, that's a big issue. So you really gotta make sure there's no debris anywhere to cause any fitment issues or any problems down the road I hit it with brake clean so should be good so let's pop in our bearings Next up is to get some lube in there, make sure everything is nice and happy. 
Take our thrust washers. These are ACL thrust washers. And these thrust washers don't need any lubrication on them. They'll basically sit where they need to, but they're going to be on the fourth main journal. There's two half moon shaped uh, like spaces cut out. You want the flat space against the block. put a little bit of lubrication on the back of this to hold it in place. Boom, now we're ready for the crank. Gonna go ahead and lay this baby down in there. Like a glove. Now I'm not gonna put any lubrication on the crank itself because I don't want anything to get in the holes for the main caps. So I'm going to lubricate the main caps while they are off. Get out our torque wrench. First step, torque is 18. Next step is 56. Alright, second step is 56 foot pounds. Boom, it's torqued. First test, after you torque it down, it is all lubed, is you need to make sure that it spins. Butter, <laughs> Fucking butter. Butter, bro. I bet. Now we can assemble the piston rings onto the pistons and get them bitches installed. 
Well, it's day three. <laughs> Let's get this shit finished. Now for the piston insulation. If you remember from the previous uh, video when we got the rings, you'll know that I had to use um, the Hastings second ring with the NPR first ring because the NPR second ring, because I bought two sets of rings, the NPR second ring was bigger than 30,000 spring end gap. And the spec, the tolerance is 22,000, which is, is what I set it at for the Hastings rings, but it was too big. So we had to go with the Hastings rings for the second ring. So uh, we have to get these rings installed and then we can uh, install the pistons into the block. Orientation. The NPR top ring has an end. I don't know if you can see that, that end right there. You could say it means north, but it means up. This will be the top of the ring. For the Hastings second ring, there's a small dot. You can see it right there. That dot will go up. But before we even put those on, we need to install the oil control rings and the spring style ring that goes with it. I'm going to be using the Hastings oil control rings as well. Now these, these aren't so much of a concern whenever you install them. Uh, spiraling them on, you can do that with these because they have a little bit more flexibility to them and they won't bend. When you come to the compression rings, you definitely do not want to spiral them. They can cause them to bend and cause a twist, which can cause them to um, have leakage past the rings. So with these two rings, we'll use the piston ring expander to install them just wide enough so they slide down over the piston. There are two, two of these rings per cylinder and one spring ring. Let's go ahead and get these on. Before you put the rings on, you want to lube the piston's uh, ring grooves. We're gonna use engine oil and lube up the ring grooves that way everything goes together smoothly and there's not gonna be any binding. So the spring ring actually has to go on first. It has these little grooves uh, as you can see right in the back there and the ring kind of sits in front of it and holds it on so he's going first oil control rings are installed now the compression rings we have to use these uh, ring expander for you don't want to squeeze this too tight you will bend the ring so you just want to get it open enough so that you can get the uh, ring over the piston. So you insert your piston ring into the expander. Open it up just enough to get it down and over. And into the groove. Your piston ring is now installed. Same thing for the top ring, just wide enough so that you can get it on. And just like that, the piston rings are now installed. I'm going to knock out the rest of these and then we'll clock the rings before we install the pistons. Now that we have all the piston rings installed, we're going to go ahead and get the bearings looped and get ready for installation. and then. We will have to clock the rings. So basically, the ring end gap you don't want on any of the thrust surfaces. This right here on the skirt is considered the thrust surface. As the piston goes down, these two sides of the piston will push either against the wall. You don't want the piston ring gap to be on those edges. It can cause excessive blow by and excessive oil burning. So you have to clock them so that the gap of the of the rings aren't on those sides. 
let's go ahead and get these apart and get them lubed and ready for installation. Now that we have the pistons all lubed up and ready to go in, bearing wise, we're going to turn the engine to bottom dead center. I am going to do the outside cylinders first, so we want our crank to be at bottom dead center, which means our rod journal is at the top, which is the bottom. You want to make sure the cylinders are lubed. We are going to lube the pistons as well, but we definitely want to make sure that the cylinders are lubed. Now that we have our cylinder lubed, we're going to go ahead to and lube and clock our piston rings. <laughs> so this is a little diagram I just drew up. Um, this is how the, pi the pistons rings are going to be positioned. So this thick, the thicker center section is the piston pin. You don't want either of the openings of the top two compression rings on that pin or on the front to rear surface of uh, the piston which is called the thrust surface so they'll be staggered 90 degrees top you can have this on the rear towards the intake or you can have it on the front towards the exhaust either way will work as long as you stagger them this way and you don't put them in line with the thrust surface or with the pin so I'm going to put them on the intake side so top pin is going to be so this is, this right here is this back and forth. So the skirt, top ring will be here, second ring will be here, and then the oil control rings will be here, here, and here. Um, out of 15, 15 degrees away from each other. So top, that spring uh, style, and then um, the bottom oil control ring. Once they're set up like that, we can use the spring compressor and um, put the pistons in the block. Let's go ahead and lube these up. The difficult part about this is when you put them in the ring compressor, the the uh, um, it wants to kind of change where the uh, orientation of the rings are. So. You just gotta be mindful that mindful of that and be careful with that. So oil ring, let's find the opening for the spring, which is right here. You guys can see that. Where those two uh, pieces meet up and they butt up against each other. That's the opening. Position that over this way. And then we'll put the bottom ring over there. So, and now once once they're positioned, you can move the whole thing as an assembly. Once they're positioned, you can move the whole thing. So, we have top ring. We have them butted up against each other right there. And then we have the bottom oil control ring gap right there. Bottoms are set. We just got to make sure that they stay there. So, I'm going to put my thumb on them. Just to hold in there. Second ring behind the first intake valve. And then 90 degrees to that is the top compression ring. So like that. Boom. And now put them in the um, ring compressor. So now that we have our piston rings clocked, set the ring compressor down over top, and I hold it to one side like this, put my finger on it, and tighten it. You wanna get it pretty tight on. Once you're snug on, then you can go ahead and set the bottom of the skirt into the piston bore and then tap the piston on down. <laughs> you
You usually want to use a rubber mallet, but I don't have one, so I'm just gonna tap this down. Make sure this is flat. Once that's on, just go ahead and tap it down in with the butt of the hammer. So it was a little stubborn, um, but I did get it in. Uh, I'm gonna get this this one in now, and then we'll turn it over and torque the rod bolts, and then we'll turn the engine over slowly and get to the uh, cylinder two and three rod. Just like that, we have two pistons installed. So let's flip this over and get them torqued down. So usually whenever you're installing stuff like this, you'll, the rod bolts can scratch the crank. So you wanna put a piece of rubber on it so it doesn't score the journal. Uh, I like to live dangerously, so I didn't do that. But you just have to guide it up while you push up on the piston and guide it into it, the journal. Once it's seated, go ahead and grab your rod cap, lube it up, seat it. Torque spec for these are 30 foot pounds. In order to get them uh, equally snug so that you don't torque one side down more than the other. And go ahead for the torque. done that's basically it for the rest of them uh, I'm gonna get these done and then we'll catch up with the rest of the assembly everything's torqued now to make sure that it still spins and still like butter it's naturally going to get tougher whenever the pistons change direction but once it's got oil pressure and some combustion behind it it should be good I'm going to add a little bit of, a little bit more oil to the cylinder walls to help free it up a little bit and it spins fine but the pistons bores are probably still a little dry so add a little bit of oil to that and uh, we can uh, start putting the bottom end back together the rest of the oil baffling the oil pickup the oil pump the rear main seal water pump the tensioner all the good stuff all the amenities the big part of this is over we have it together the crank the rods the pistons they're in we're good to go man i just put a little bit of oil in the cylinders and uh i'm using an extension but she spins over really easy i'm excited this is almost finished when it comes to building engines, you want protection. And I'm pretty excited about this ACL Performance High Flow High Pressure Oil Pump. I know there's a stock bottom end and there is a chance that it could fail under boost, but to keep the clearances happy and keep everything lubricated well, I decided to go with this. And um, it should look 
<laughs> really nice. It should work fantastic. This thing looks so goddamn good. And it comes with studs. And <clears throat> this is going to guarantee my engine some extra needed protection to handle the high RPM and the high boost or not high boost pressure, but the high RPM and the boost pressure that I'll see. So let's go ahead and slap her on. Now before we put this on, we have to um, apply a layer of gasket maker. Now you don't want too thick of a layer, so I'm just going to be smearing it on with my finger. I just want enough to create a good seal. We'll let that tack up for about 15 20 seconds and then we'll throw the pump on. Now that it's tacked up, I'll line up the oil pump gear. And the slider right on it. Got our oil pump bolts. Now that the oil pump is mounted, we can go ahead and mount our windage tray and our oil pickup. Now that we have all of this together, we have to get the rear main seal on, and then we can put on the oil pan. Brand new factory OEM rear main seal. You can't usually get these in with your hands. Let's see if I can, probably not. Uh, probably gonna have to tap it in uh, until it's seated. Oh, I can push it on my hand. Neat! Well, it's not all the way in, but I'm gonna tap it in until it's flush and then put this baby on. Fresh rear main seal installed to the rear main seal plate. Time to install. Just like the oil pump, uh, you wanna make sure that you get a decent amount of gasket maker so that you get a nice even seal around the edges. Doesn't have to be too thick, just just enough. Now it's a little bit hard to get to, but you just wanna work this seal on around the crank. Just 
drag it back and forth. Should slip right over. And then the dowels line up and it presses right in. Let me go ahead and bolt it up. Rear main seal is on, oil pump is on, windage tray is on, oil pickup is on. Only thing left to do now is to put the oil pan gasket on and the oil pan on. So for this build, I did purchase a, from Speed Factory, the uh, Hunter Tuned actually showed me this uh, oil pan gasket, um, but it has a, a thin piece of metal inside so it actually keeps its rigidity and doesn't squish. Uh, most of the time when you do an oil pan gasket and you tighten it too much, you can split the gasket or squish it out and then it won't seal, it'll continue to leak. These you can, if you're careful with them, you can use them a couple times over. So I'm glad I got this. Shout out to Speed Factory, thank you. So it came with a, a small, so, uh, small, thing of uh, black RTV because it came with it I'm gonna use it I'm gonna put a little bit on both sides of the gasket but well, you can see how rigid that is it's pretty dope but I'm gonna put a little bit on both sides of the gasket and uh, yeah <laughs> Now that that's on, time for the oil pan. Get my oil pan bolts, bolt that baby down. So these bolts are pretty ugly, and I didn't really clean them up, but they'll work. And the threads are clean, so. Oil pan is on and tight. Now it's ready for the uh, timing gear, tensioner, water pump, and uh, post mount. I also forgot that uh, we had to install a couple more things. The black box, the oil cooler, um, the water pipe, thermostat housing, and I have a, a brand new um, 170 degree thermostat that I'm going to be putting in it. Uh, it runs a 180 stock, but um, the 170 will help with temps under boost and stuff. Um, so, you know, cooler temps is a lot better for longevity and power. So, put a little lube on it, help it slide in a little bit. So we got the black box, the oil cooler on, and the water pipe. Now I just gotta get the thermostat in and the thermostat housing attached. And we can move on to the timing side. So we've got our new 170 degree thermostat installed. And now we just gotta put some lube on the seal. And uh, put the thermostat housing on. For the timing kit, I did just get an OEM replacement style kit with like a factory belt, but I am going to eventually upgrade to a Gates belt. I don't know how well this would fare against these valve springs and 9,000 RPM. So this this will be here just, just for now until I can get um, 
a gates belt and then we'll get this baby retimed on a gates belt a little more reliable we got our brand new tensioner tensioner spring and tensioner bolt the bigger side will go onto this dowel and then the uh, short or smaller side will attach to the spring which will then attach to this nub and uh, hold the tension onto the tension. There we go. Not gonna crank it down or anything because we're not gonna time it until it's in the car almost. Um, I'm not putting the head on until it's in the car as well so I don't even need to do that but so this kit did come with new seals there's a new oil pump seal and uh, two camshaft seals I'll be using these but I'm gonna retain this oil pump seal for future now I'm going to also put a little bit of gasket maker along this outside to help seal it I know there is a gasket here but I don't like to take the chance, so. Now they do make ga gasket makers specifically for coolant ways and water pumps. Um, this is just a backup because that has that seal. So I don't think it's gonna be an issue that I'm not using water pump sealant. They're all RTV, so I kinda see them as the same. Now when you put on something like this, you definitely don't want any of this in the passageway. So you don't want this floating around your cooling system, clogging stuff up. So the best idea is to wipe the inside with your finger after you got um, everything that you need smeared. Just so that you can make sure that none of this gets into the cooling system. Take my gasket, put it in our water pump. It's like a glove, a loose fitting glove, <laughs> but it works. Now we can get the timing gear on and the post mount. If you can see this, uh, these pieces, they kind of bow out like, like this. Uh, if you have them flipped inward, it'll bite onto the belt and it can cause it to tear. So these have to be placed facing outward of each other. There's a dowel, a woodruff key that's in that's already uh, built into the uh, to the gear. It slides onto the groove right here where it is. Put a plate in first. This key faces outward. And then what would go on is the crank pulley. And that has a woodruff key as well, which slides into here. And then the crank pulley bolt. But I'm just going to put the crank pulley and the bolt on just for mock-up purposes. Just so that you can see. There's a, there's a dowel inside here, right there my thumb is at and this key fits inside there onto the crank where that keyway had fit so it's not really too difficult to line them up you could just line up the holes and slide it in if you can get it in but I just put it put it onto the crank itself and then slide the crank fully over top.
And that would be what essentially holds the crank gear in place. And I believe the crank pulley bolt torque is, I wanna say 150 foot pounds, but I'm not sure. I don't usually torque these. <laughs> I just crank them down with a gun or, um, there's a pair of vice grips that you can, it has a chain on it and it'll, you can hold it still and I torque onto it with a breaker bar. I haven't had any bad luck with it, but I would suggest you torquing it if you're doing it at home. I'm gonna just hit this quick. Once we're ready to uh, put the engine in the car, I'll take this off, time it, put on the belts, and uh, get it all ready for the head and to be timed like that. Final piece is to put on is the post mount. Now for a B series and a CRX, you need a DA post mount. You can't use an EG or I mean uh, you can't use a, a DC integral. You need the two bolt DA post mount. And just like that guys, the bottom man is together and <laughs> we're this close. I just have uh, to rebuild the transmission uh, tomorrow and the next day I will be doing that. Um, and then the following three days, I'm going to be trying to pull the motor, clean the bay and put the motor, put this motor back in. So I still have plenty of work to do. Um, it's definitely gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but with that being said, I've done it before, so it's not nothing new. So, you know, with challenges comes, you know, it shows you what you're made of, basically. When you're put down to the to the wire and you only got so much time to do something, you're, it's make or break. You either do it or you don't, and that's life. She looks pretty, though. So thanks guys, thanks for watching, stay tuned for the transmission rebuild, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.